G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today is all about dinoflagellates. We're going to be looking at how to identify and how to treat this problem algae in your aquarium. We're also going to be looking at an example of dino and we're going to show you our treatment method for this tank. So let's have a look. So dinoflagellates have a few different common names, sometimes called brown slime algae, sometimes called golden algae. Um, dinoflagellates looks like brown, slimy, snotty sort of algae, which will often grow up off the rock and will sometimes produce little gas bubbles. And we have an example of dino in this tank here. You can see these brown strands now, we also have some on the back of the tank and there are a few different types of algae in this tank. There is definitely some green hair algae, but dino is the problem. And so we're going to look at a system whereby we treat this tank and cure it of dinoflagellates. So I'm just prepping a workspace so that I don't make a mess in this beautiful house. And the first thing I'm going to do is manually remove as much of the dino as possible. Now all the treatment plans for this type of algae really should involve some type of manual removal. So I'll just open this hood and I'm going to use a toothbrush today. Now it might seem like a fairly slow way to remove the algae out of this tank but by using a toothbrush, I'm able to go over the surface of the rock and very carefully remove any of the loose algae. Now this does two things. Not only am I removing the dinoflagellates, a little bit of the green hair algae, but I'm also removing any bacterial silt, detritus, uneaten food, anything which has settled in the rock, which feeds nutrients to the algae. So I'll go over all of the rock. This can take a while. I'll also go over the back and you'll see dinoflagellates are characteristic in the fact that they're very easily removed. And you can even use your hand to waft over the algae and you'll see the little particles will come free and hopefully go down the overflow and be pulled out of the system by the skimmer. Now I'll just make mention uh, as to what we believe has caused the dinoflagellate problem in this tank. So over the last few months We've been dosing a combination of trace elements into the tank and without having done uh, an ICP uh, test to accurately look at the levels of trace in the tank, unfortunately some of these levels have got quite high. And so the level of iodine, bromine, um, chromium, zinc have actually got uh, quite high and it has caused um, a bit of an imbalance in this system and so the dyno has taken hold. And so now the, the trick is really 
to get it under control and fix it before it becomes a massive problem. Okay, so we're still at the stage of manual removal of the dinoflagellate algae in this tank. And the way I'm doing it is with a toothbrush, but you may notice that we've actually set up a micro-bubbling system, and it's just over here. We just have a battery-operated air pump feeding air into one of the wave makers. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because having the micro bubbles in the tank actually helps to lift the algae that's been loosened off the rock and uh, causes it to raise to the surface of the water and go down the overflow to be pulled out by the protein skimmer. Now, in general, I'm not really an advocate for micro bubbling. I don't think it's particularly good for the corals. However, in this situation, when you're trying to remove as much of the dinoflagellate out of the system as possible, it actually does help quite a lot. So I'm just going to leave the tank micro bubbling for a, probably another five or ten minutes and uh, allowing the protein skimmer to pull out all this dino. But I just wanted to mention about the last few weeks history of this tank. So once we realised that the trace elements were high, we've hit the tank with a couple of large water changes in consecutive weeks. And the reason for doing this was of course to reduce the amount of the trace elements that had built up but we also wanted to ensure that the nutrient content of the water was very low. And so we're getting very low nitrate and phosphate readings with this tank. And so it's certainly not a case that the nitrate or phosphate is the problem for this algae outbreak. So another thing which we've done is we've manipulated the light schedule. We've reduced the photo period by probably two or three hours per day. And we've also reduced the intensity of the red, the white, and the green um, in the spectrum of the light. Now, if this tank wasn't a tank that we had uh, healthy corals, SBS and LPS, then I would probably consider doing a blackout period. And a blackout period is where you don't run the lights at all. You have them turned off for somewhere between one and three days. But uh, because we have the corals in here, I'm really, uh, really keen to fix the problem without causing any detriment to the corals. So today it's all about manual removal, um, checking the water chemistry, making sure that's okay. Uh, we've done the lights already and we have one more thing which we're going to do just to hit this algae with everything possible in one go so that we can quickly remove it from the system. So today we're going to use a new product to Gallery Aquatica. It's a treatment called DinoX, and it's a treatment specifically for dinoflagellate infestation in a tank. Now, this is actually uh, the second tank that I'll have tried this product on, and the first tank is going quite well, and we've certainly seen a reduction in the dinoflagellates. So today we're going to dose this tank, and we're going to then dose every two days until the dino is gone. So I'll put this dose in. We've calculated that the volume of this tank is around about a thousand liters. And you use at the rate of five mils per 100 liters. So I'm putting in just under 50 mils. I'm gonna put this up at the, uh, near the wave maker. And it's suggested this, that, that this product goes in towards the end of the photo period at night time. So we've maybe dosed a little bit early today, um, but uh, I think that we'll see a good reduction in the, the dinoflagellates. But we'll come back to this tank in probably a few days or a week or so, and we'll see how it's going. So with all algae problems in marine tanks, I like to hit them with three different systems. I like to adjust the light schedule and photo period, and we've done that with this tank. We've made the lights more blue, less white and red and green. We've changed the photo period to make it shorter. The second thing is reducing the nutrient content of the water. And you can do this in a variety of ways. Uh, you can use carbon. We've done it with water changing with this system, so the nutrient content is very low. 
Uh, also, a slight reduction in the amount of food going into the tank can help. And the third thing is uh, manual removal of the algae. So whether or not it's cyano or green hair algae or dinoflagellates like with this tank, by removing as much of it from the system as possible, it really helps speed up the improvement and you know, getting rid of this problem algae. Also, we've uh, added the Dino X with this tank. So as it's a new product, it'll be really interesting to see exactly how it improves the Dino in this tank. So stay tuned to episodes in the future that we'll have where we'll show you exactly how this tank progresses. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.